Hi, Android Java students. I am feeling extremely tired, so forgive me if this is less coherent than usual. I thought it would be fun to make an MP3 player today as a break from studying for finals. Um, I'm going to be building on the worksheet that I gave you last week, which we are now staring at. Uh, I took this from the Princeton Intro CS website, so you can, people who are not my students, just on the internet, you can go there and check this out if you want. Um, we'll be using NetBeans just like last time to make the GUI. So here I am in NetBeans. We'll start by making a new project. It's a Java project. I'll click Next. I'm going to call this MP3 Player. And just like last time, I'm going to immediately delete the class that it creates for me because I don't want to use it. And instead, I will right-click on my package and say uh, I want a new JFrame form. And this one I will call MP3 Player. All right, uh, let's create what we want it to look like first, and then we'll figure out how to make it behave that we want it to uh, behave the way we want it to behave. So I'll drag a panel over. I will fill the whole window. Um, I'll drag a J label over, and have it say, "Detunes, my MP3 player." <coughs> and I'll probably expand that to be the full width. And I'll go to Properties. If you don't see Properties, by the way, or if you don't see any of these windows, you can go to Windows and Palette and Properties are both there. Uh, under Properties, I'll set the font to be larger. And I'll set it to be centered. No, I don't want it to be centered. All right, <clears throat> let's make some buttons. I'll make three buttons. One button for, uh-oh, I double clicked it. Go back to Design, right click and say Edit Text. One button for um, opening a file, one button for playing, and one button for stopping. And as I said, you can right click to go to edit text to change what it says. Um, cool. <clears throat> so far, so good. Let's go take a look at the source. So here we are in the generated source code. Um, the auto-generated source code, all of the fields for this class are actually at the bottom of the class, not the top of the class. So if you go to the bottom, here we've got J button 1, 2, and 3. I have already forgotten what J button 1, 2, and 3 are, because those are not very descriptive names. So let's go back to design, I'll click open, I'll right click, I'll change variable name, and now I can call it open button, which is a much more memorable name, a much more descriptive name. Let's change all of them. Oops. <clears throat> and now when you go back to source at the bottom, you see open button, play button, stop button. So that makes sense. All right. Um, the way that you add behaviors to these buttons is you can select the button. You will right click and go to events, action, action performed. And that creates a method called open button action performed. And this method runs once exactly whenever you click the button. So just like before, if you wanted to test to make sure this works, you could do system.out.println and just display something in there. You can run it, and you can verify that it does indeed do something when you click the button. All right, let's make it do what we really want it to do. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back to the method. I'm just going to write some comments so that I can remember the sequence of things that I want it to do. So I think what I want it to do is open a file choosing dialog, and then I want to create a new MP3 file based on whatever file the user selects. Okay, so this is where you have to use the stuff that we learned last time from the handout. So let's go look at the handout. Um, on the second page of the handout, we had this code. This was code that creates a new file chooser, tells the file chooser to display the window, and then once the window has been displayed, you can have it tell you what file was selected. So let's copy these four lines of code. Um, we don't know what JFile chooser is. We have to import that. So I click on the little uh, light bulb and say import, 
I would also like this to be indented correctly. Let's just test this much of it. Um, because I'm already printing out the file that we selected. So I'll run it, I'll click open. Great, now it opens this dialog. I can go and select a file. And down here in the console, you see it displays the path to my selected file. Cool, so working so far. Except I don't actually want it to display the path to my file. I want to create a new MP3 that is, uh, I want to create a new MP3. In order to do that, we have to create the MP3 class. Remember, we did this back at the handout. Here's the code from the Princeton website, public class MP3. So let's make that class. I'll right click and I'll say new Java class. I will call it MP3 with a capital M and a capital P and a numeral three. Notice how it says package MP3 player. Uh, the package is the collection, uh, it's the name of the collection of code that we're operating inside of right now. So uh, this little package shape thing right here tells us our package. Um, I'm gonna delete the class declaration, the public class MP3, but I'm gonna leave the package. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to copy starting at public class MP3 from my handout. <clears throat> I'm leaving off the import statements. We can put it, well, all right, hold on. Let's, let's go ahead and include the import statements. You could leave them off if you wanted to. All right, so far so good. There's still an error though. It doesn't know what Java Zoom is. That's because uh, this comes from a jar file that we need to put inside our build path. Again, we did this last time. Uh, in the handout, I refer you to this URL where you can download it. So uh, I know where I already downloaded it and saved it inside a folder. You probably want to do the same right now. When you're ready to put it in your project, you do it this way. You select the upper level project, right click, go to properties. Under libraries, you want the compile tab and we're gonna say add jar slash folder. Um, David Dobrovich, this is I think the folder where I saved my jar file. Yep, here it is. It's called jl1.0.jar. So I'll click open, now it's in my build path. I'll click OK, and now it knows what that thing is. All right, so no errors anywhere so far. I've got my MP3 object all as well in the world. Notice my MP3 constructor takes a string that's the file path for the MP3 that I want to create. So uh, that should give us a clue about how to create the actual MP3 object back here in our uh, in our GUI. So I've we're, we're back inside the method that runs when you click the button. Um, selected file is the name of the file that they've selected. So down here, I want to create a new mp3 file, so I could say mp3 song equals new mp3 and then give it a path. Um, but you know, I want this object to be accessible in my entire player. Because I know later on when I press the play button, I want to be able to tell this variable that's holding the mp3 object to start playing. So if I want it to be accessible everywhere, I'm gonna declare this as a field of the entire class. So here I am at the very top, I'm gonna to make the field mp3 song, and the constructor is a great place to give it a value. I'm gonna set it to null initially. Null is the value that means there is no object there yet. Um, but now I can actually give it the real value back down here where I know what file they've selected. So I'll say song equals new mp3 and then instead of having a path that I type in here like C drive, my folder, or whatever, I can actually ask the file up here, selected file.getAbsolutePath, path, I can ask the file what is the path to its current location and it will tell me. So selected file like get absolute path, I'm using that file path to create my MP3 object. Now that it's created, the open button has done everything that I want it to do. Let's make the play and stop buttons. This is a lot more straightforward. So I'll add an event, action, action performed. Inside the play button, all I want it to do is say song.play. 
Okay, there's a danger here. What happens if they click the play button before they've actually opened a file? Right now, you see here it says null pointer exception. What null pointer exception means is that it's running this command because I pressed the play button. So I'm asking the object inside this variable to run this method for me. But there is no object in here yet. Remember, I set it to be null up here in the constructor. Here's null. Um, and since I haven't hit the open button yet, there, there is no object in there. So this method is actually pointing to null. It's pointing to the null reference that is inside this variable. Um, I, th I think a safe thing to do is this. Say if song does not equal, that's what the exclamation mark means. It means does not. So if song not equal to null, then it's safe to play it. If song does equal null, I'll skip this and it won't do anything. All right, I think that now, based on that, you can create the functionality for the stop button. Just remember that uh, the method that you call is not called stop, it is called close. Um, and that should be it. As an extension, I think what you should do is create a new J label in the middle here. And before you've loaded any songs, it should say, please load a song. And then once you click open, uh, and you select a file, it should display the name of the the path. It should display the full path, and it should say playing, and then give us the name here so that we can see what it is that's currently being played. Um, another nice thing you might want to consider is you can disable these buttons until they've actually selected a file. Let me briefly show you how to do that. Up here in the constructor, after I initialize the components, the components are all of the various elements, including the buttons. Um, I can say something like this, play button dot set enabled to be false. And I'll show you what that looks like when I run it. Now it's not enabled. I can't click play. So you can also set the stop button to be disabled in the same way up in the constructor. And then if they actually successfully load a file, you can set them both to be enabled again. Um, and I think that would be another nice extension for your MP3 player. Good luck.